with five seconds. He's going to throw it. Howard leaps. He has it. Touchdown, Carolina. Back from the dead to tie the game with two seconds to go. Snap back, spot down. The kick is cleanly away. It is good. And it's Carter <laughs> with yes, a sir. 54 yard field goal. And how about them Tar Heels? They do it! Here's Kupak. Give Ross Amos. He's good! 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 He's Mr. Walker. Bernard fields it at the 26. Heading to the far side. Gio at the 35. Gio, he's at the 50. No, he's not. Yes, he is. Gio, he's going to take it for a touchdown. Are you kidding me? This is the Heel Tough Blog Podcast on Spreaker.com. Welcome in to this edition of the Heel Tough Blog Podcast. I'm Anthony Pegnata. With the news coming out today that Mac Brown was hired for his second go-round in Chapel Hill, we sat down and talked to the Fayetteville Observer Sammy Batten to ask him what he expects from the second tenure for Mac Brown in Chapel Hill. Sammy, how's it going today, sir? Uh, it's great, man. Kind of busy, but uh, I guess that's the fun part of the job when things are hopping and the news is happening. Yeah, this has been some timetable that they've had for this. Uh, you know, of course, uh, you know, you start with the Larry Fedora firing on San- on Sunday. Um, you know, that news was something that really I don't think came as much of a shock. But then today's news with Mac Brown, I think, did. You know, starting with Larry Fedora, you know, was this the move you think that the Tar Heels needed to make at this time and, you know, let him walk and try to start fresh? Yeah, you know, Anthony, I'm one of those kind of guys that I hate to see coaches get fired. Uh, you know, I thought Larry had uh, uh, done some really good things at Carolina that might have won him enough favor uh, that he might have been kept around for one more year. Uh, but I just think a lot of things fell into place, um, you know, including, you know, the availability of Mac Brown and the willingness – uh, that he has shown to get back into coaching. Uh, I think other factors, uh, you know, the the dwindling attendance at Kena Stadium, you know, all those things I think, you know, probably push this thing over the edge. Uh, you know, again, I'm one of those people I hate to see coaches fired. I always like to give them another chance. So I was kind of hoping that they would give Larry another chance. But but there's no doubt that, uh, that bringing Mac Brown in does – immediately a number of things one it's going to invigorate the fan base i think you'll see people coming back to keenan stadium next year because of because of back uh two uh it's going to re-energize the recruitment uh particularly of in-state players you know max known name he's got a national championship ring and he had great relationship with all the high school coaches in the state uh, and albeit many years ago, but still some of those coaches are around. Uh, and three, I think just nationally it's going to give UNC some positive news. Not a lot of positive news uh, has been out there nationally regarding North Carolina football in a long time. So I, I think all those factors came together with Max availability and, and things not going well with Larry that uh, got us to this point. Yeah, I think, uh, you know, one of the questions for a lot of people really is why so quickly? Do you think it was just because of Mac Brown's availability? Was there maybe some concern that he could go elsewhere? Or there's is there maybe another reason that we're not seeing on the surface? Well, no, I don't think it was a, a, a situation where Mac was looking at other options. I think this was probably one of the few that he would have considered. Uh, you know, he has maintained a home in North Carolina uh, through the years, even after leaving, you know, his wife, uh, uh, when they, she was a very successful real estate developer around Chapel Hill. So they have maintained those ties to Chapel Hill and in North Carolina. Uh, I don't think any other situation would have appealed to him as much. Uh, I do think 
that this wasn't like an overnight decision. I think there's been some things going on behind the scenes uh, for a couple of weeks based on a lot of people that I spoke with today. Um, and uh, so I don't, I don't think this thing just uh, – they decided to fire Larry in the last game, after the last game, and then, and then they went after Mac. I think there's been some, you know, works behind the scenes that uh, Larry probably knew a couple of weeks ago that this was going to happen. You know, he wasn't going to be retained. And, and I think some overtures had already been made to Mac Brown. And, um, and, and again, uh, I think this was the only place right now that would have come open that Mac Brown would have been interested in. From what you're hearing, is there any indication that the Tar Heels reached out to anybody else, or was Mac Brown pretty much the guy that they honed in on, and uh, once they were able to get him in there, they thought that was going to be the direction they were going? Yeah, I think Mac was the major target. Once he showed interest, and uh, you know, even Scott Satterfield at Appalachian State, who many people had been talking about on message boards as a potential replacement for Larry. Uh, he, he said today in the Southern Conference uh, teleconference that he never had been contacted by North Carolina. Uh, so I think if the search had been anybody but Mac Brown, Scott Satterfield would have been contacted. So I, I think Mac was their number one goal when they decided they were going to make a change. And, um, and again, he expressed interest immediately, and that's – uh, that's why there were no other real, real candidates. So when you look at Mac Brown, I mean, what can we really expect from him? I mean, I think one of the biggest things that a lot of people are concerned about is the age at 67 years old. The fact that he has been removed from college football now for six years. Um, as a coach, at least, he's been around the game, of course, as an analyst for ESPN. But, you know, what can fans expect and how important is it for him to get a good staff around him? Well, it's vitally important. And I think... We're already hearing that Gene Chizik may come back as a defensive coordinator, which, you know, I think that was one of the failures of Larry Fedora's uh, era there at UNC, that they were never able to really develop a quality defense. They seemed on their way in the two years Chizik was there, but then he leaves and things drop right back down. So I, I think that defensive coordinator's job is, is vitally important uh, for Mac. Uh, I think there are a lot of guys out there that can do uh, great offense, but there's only a handful of guys out there that are truly great builders of defenses, and I think Gene Chizik is probably one of those guys. But, you know, Mack will bring immediate credibility to the program. Uh, again, even though he's been out of coaching for uh, four or five years now, you know, he's still been on the college scene. Uh, people see him on TV. They hear him talk. They know he's knowledgeable about the game. Uh, uh, you know, he has a national championship ring. He's a member of the college football hall of fame or will be later in december when he gets inducted um you know those kind of credentials you know make people sit up and, and pay attention to you and uh and the fact that he's had success at carolina before you know i think uh, uh again uh, is just going to be another positive thing you know i talked to a lot of his former players today um and, and the thing that i kept hearing from them you know about what will be the immediate impact of Mac Brown at UNC? Where do you see him having the most quick uh, impact? And and the thing that they all talked about was the belief that you could be successful, that he made even when they were going through one and ten seasons at the start of his career at UNC, he had the players believing that things were going to turn around uh, no matter how bad things got. And and they got really bad. I was around for those one to ten years, and they were really bad. But uh, he still had those guys believing that eventually things were going to turn around. And he comes back to UNC with much more talent than he had when he got there the first time. So I do think that there's a potential there for a really quick turnaround under Mac, you know, provided he hires the right people. And I think with his connections and, and college football, I think you're going to see some excellent coordinators uh, come to UNC, and I think you're going to see some former uh, North Carolina stars uh, wind up on Mac Brown's staff. I, you know, there's guys like Natron Means and Dre Bly, you know, mm -hmm. great Tar Heel uh, players in their time who, who played for Mac and are now in the coaching game, and uh, I think you're going to see some of those guys. I hope he keeps Tommy Thigpen around because I think Tommy's an excellent recruiter and, and 
and good coach and, and would be a great addition to his staff too. But I do think you're going to see some former Tar Heels wind up on the staff as well. So when we look at the end of this second tenure for Mac Brown, what do you think will be the storyline that we will be talking about? Will it be a good storyline or will it be one of those times where we look back and say that may not have been the right move? Uh, I think we're going to look back and say this was the right move for UNC at this time. It's not the long-range solution, uh, but I think if Mac can hang around for five years and get this thing going back in the right direction, I'm not going to sit here and start counting that they're going to compete with Clemson for the ACC championship or anything like that. But if he can get them, you know, back to seven, eight, maybe even nine wins, you know, uh, a season for a couple of years in a row, um, you know, then the situation looks good for a younger coach to come in and for North Carolina to attract, uh, you know, a quality uh, replacement for him. And that replacement could very well be on the staff, uh, whoever he hires. Again, until we know exactly who that is, we don't know who might be a coach in waiting. Uh, now, that situation didn't, when they did that at Texas with Will Muschamp, uh, didn't work out very well in Texas for that coach and waiting thing when Mac was there. But still, that doesn't mean it, it wouldn't work here. But, uh, but I think after five years, we're going to see this program turned around pretty significantly and and i think it'll happen sooner rather than later and and uh you're gonna get four or five good years out of mac and then maybe he moves into the athletic director's chair i don't know <laughs> you know uh, there are a bunch of possibilities for him beyond his years of coaching because he is uh such a good ambassador for the university seems very possible seems very possible so sammy batten of the Fayetteville Observer, stopping by to chat with us. Hey, want to thank you so much for giving us just a little bit of your time on what has been a crazy day uh, in Chapel Hill and will continue to be a crazy week here as Mac Brown tries to put together a staff. Yeah, man, it's my pleasure, man. It's great being with you. All right, thank you very much, and you take care, okay? All right, man. All right, so Sammy Batten of the Fayetteville Observer. You guys heard him right there. He's been a guy that's been covering the North Carolina Tar Heel beat for the Fayetteville Observer for a long, long time. And uh, he actually was on uh, the staff with the Fayetteville Observer when Mac Brown was on the staff back in the mid-'90s. And now Mac Brown, of course, is back, as you guys know, earlier today inside Carolina. First reporting, thanks to Greg Barnes, that Mac Brown will be back in Chapel Hill for the 2019 season. He will be the head coach of the North Carolina Tar Heels. This announced on Tuesday afternoon. That will be when they will officially announce him as the head coach. Would expect that there will be an introductory press conference sometime, more than likely in the mid-afternoon, and we will update you when we know more from that or about that if there is stuff released, of course, beforehand. Mac Brown's time in Chapel Hill, the first go-round, he went 69-46-1, and one, appeared in three major bowl games, did not coach in the final major bowl game, which was the Gator Bowl in 1997, but his track record is as proven as it gets. Of course, his time at Texas is where everyone will turn, where he went to two national championships and won one back in 2005 in one of the biggest upsets in college football history. A lot of people saying that Mac Brown could re-energize the fan base, re-energize the state of North Carolina when it comes to high school recruiting, and potentially get North Carolina turned back in the right direction. It's going to be a matter of waiting and seeing. As always, stick with the Heel Tough Blog Podcast for the latest updates on everything going on with the North Carolina Tar Heels football program. Thank you guys for listening, and as always, go Tar Heels! Oh,